Good morning. How are we doing this morning? Are we doing good? Amen. Come on, you can do better than that. How are you doing this morning? Amen. Amen. Uh, God is good. Amen. God is good. God, when I say God is good, you say all the time. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Amen. Amen. He is. Um, this morning, I cannot help uh, but think about how blessed we are. Amen. That we are blessed. Many of you have been blessed with uh, a godly mother, and today's the day we celebrate that. I know that I was blessed in that way. And uh, when we're blessed in that way, we have a mother who shows us love. Amen. Shows us the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's what today is all about. Just a couple real quick announcements. Tomorrow, on Monday morning, the second Monday of every month, the CAC comes in here. And we clean out this center section of chairs. And we pass out food to probably 100, 100 people, 120 people. And if you want to volunteer for that, we would love to have you here uh, tomorrow morning uh, to help volunteer and help pass out the food, help deliver the food, uh, pray with people, talk with people, uh, just minister to people. Amen. Just to minister to many people. Over 100 people will come through here uh, tomorrow morning. If you want to do that, just see me or Pastor Earl. We'll be here about 8 o'clock is, uh, is when we would love to have you here. And then the second thing is, uh, if you want to sign up for a small group, I know there's one small group who hasn't started yet that's just about to start this week. It's the basic class, the basic series that Pastor Earl's doing. And he would love to have you join that class. The basic series, just learning some fundamentals, learning some basic stuff about the Bible, some basic stuff through Francis Chan, what he, the way he teaches is amazing. The youth just went through the basic series. It was an awesome series. Trust me, you would love to be a part of it. If you want to be a part of that, see Pastor Earl or sign up in the hub for the basic series. That'll start this week. Amen. You ready to worship this morning? Amen. You ready to worship a good and holy God this morning? Amen. Let's stand and let's worship this morning. I want more of you, God. 
rather be There's no place I'd rather be Than here in your love Than here in your love There's no place I'd rather be There's no place I'd rather be There's no place I'd rather be Than here in your love Than here in your love Put that up on the screen for me Put that verse up I want you to sing that here this morning, and I want you to think about what these words say. Is there any place, is there any place that I would rather be than here in God's love, than here in His presence? Are we singing lies this morning, or is that the truth? Lord, won't you just fill this place? Fill me. Yes, it's been a rough week. Yes, I, maybe I don't feel like crying, why worshiping this morning. Strip that away. That was our prayer this morning before we come in here was strip the hardness away. Strip the hardness away so that we can you can fill us with that presence. So we can feel you this morning. Because that's the only place that we can ever change is in your presence. That's the only place. So Lord, I'm asking you right now, strip our hardness away. Strip anything that separates us from you, Lord. Take it from us right now. We lift you up. And when we sing, there's no place that we'd rather be than hear your love, Lord. We mean it. We mean it. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than hearing your love, than hearing your love. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be. There's no place I'd rather be than here in your love, than here in your love. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control. Cause I want more of you, God. Cause I want more of you, God. Sing it out, lift him up. Set a fire down in my soul that I can't control. Cause I want more of you. We lift you up this morning. I want more of you, God. So set a fire down in my soul that I can't contain, that I can't control.
gospel. And if you believe that, I want you, when we sing this thing, I want you to clap so that your hands hurt. And I want you to sing as loud as you can. I want you to jump as high as you can because you don't care what the person next to you thinks because you are unashamed of the gospel. Amen. And when it says shout, I want you to rip the roof off. I want you to shout as loud as you can. Lord, Heavenly Father, we are unashamed of you this morning. It's important that how many times we find ourselves doing something totally against what we believe or totally, you know, we just want to buy in. Why? Because we're afraid of what people might think of what we do, what we say, how we look, how we dress. And I think that's what intrigues me so much about the youth that we have right now and how fired up they are. Because we got a group of youth that, you know what, they don't care. And here we are, 30, 40, 50. We still care what people think. We still let the people that ain't living for God dictate how our actions are. So to see these 16, 17, 18-year-old kids, I don't care. I know my God. I don't care what you think. Call me what you want. How powerful is that? powerful is that Lord Heavenly Father we just we just ask for your spirit right now that you take whatever whatever we've done and cast it out that you would restore us as this next song says restore us to where we once were restore us where we had that that fire that unquenchable fire for you. Lord, we seek your face this morning. Just move in this place. Restore us, Lord. Lift us up. We pray.
stood before the creation. Eternity in your hands. You spoke the earth into motion. And my soul now stands. stood before my failures and carried the cross to my shame my sins went upon your shoulders my soul Can I say? And what could I do? But offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. I walk with a bone, I shall wait. 
Amen. You may be seated this morning. Amen. You know, this morning as we come to our, our time of offering, can you put up that so what can I say slide? And I was sitting there and I was thinking and, and this song was playing and uh, I was thinking about the story where the Pharisees, they come up to Jesus and they say, you're a great teacher. Will you tell us this? Uh, should we give to Caesar? Should we pay our taxes? And Jesus says, well, show me the, show me the coin. And they pull out the coin and, of course, Caesar's face is on it. And he goes, whose is this? This is Caesar's. Give it to Caesar. But then he says, give to Caesar what is Caesar's, but give to God what is God's. Amen? Give to Caesar what is Caesar. Give to God what is God's. And tax season just came up. The truth is we have no choice but to pay our taxes. You have no choice but to give to Caesar what is Caesar. But our God is a loving God, and He gives you a choice of whether you're going to give God what is God's. Amen? He gives you a choice. Now, it's a command, but it's a choice He gives you. You see, I'm not just talking about money. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about, but offer this heart, oh God, completely to you. It's not just about what your wallet has. It's about your heart. And the truth is, in the, in the Bible, when it mentions heart, heart means a lot more than just that little organ that's inside your body that pumps blood. It means your thoughts. It means your desires. It means your wants. It means your soul. It means every single part of you offer to God completely. Offer it all to God completely. When it says the heart in the Bible, it means something so much more. So this morning, all I'm asking and all I'm praying is that the Holy Spirit will lead you to offer whatever God is calling you to offer this morning. If He's calling you to offer your heart, come up and offer your heart to Jesus this morning. And if He's calling you to put something in the offering plate, give it to God this morning. Give it to God this morning. If He's calling you to lay down something that you're holding on to, lay it down this morning. Whatever it may be, give to God what is God's. And I'm going to tell you what He wants more than anything is you. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, this morning, Lord, this morning, Lord, I am so in awe of you. God, we give so much of ourselves to other places and other things and other people. And those, are, those may be good. But God, we need to give ourselves to you first and completely. Lord, this morning, I pray that we give unto you what is yours. Lord, this morning, I pray that whatever we're supposed to give in the form of offering, we would give. Whatever we're supposed to give in the form of our desires, we would give those up as well. Whatever we're supposed to give in the form of our wants, we would give those up as well. Lord, we just offer our hearts to you this morning. And we know that our hearts, they're more than just that organ in our body that pumps blood. They're our thoughts, our wants, our desires, our needs, our children. It's everything we care about. And that includes our wallet. That includes our time. That includes our effort. That includes our attention. Lord, I pray this morning that we will offer our hearts, everything, to you completely this morning. And it's in your son's name that I pray and everybody said, amen.
Amen, amen, amen. You guys doing okay today? Hey, I'm going to tell you, I've been out of, out of commission uh, last week. Um, I actually got sick just a few days ago, and I'm going to tell you, it's good to feel good. Amen? Have y'all ever been sick, so sick, where you just felt like just laying around, and all of a sudden laying around just made you feel just miserable, and you don't feel any better until you just eventually start feeling better and you get back out? Well, yesterday was my first day back out. And I want to tell you one thing that has been happening in my family is that we've been taking just a little bit of time here and there with just my family. And yesterday was one of those days, and we headed down to EJ's College. Down, at, He's going to BCTC, and it's just a branch off of UK. And we, we start heading out in his car because his car is a little better than any of the rest of our cars. So we start heading out in his car, and he says, man, it, things are good. The, the car is running good, and we're going down the highway, and we look in the back, and it looks like we're taking off. Um, from a jet and everything is like just smoke behind us and he's like well, I added two more quarts of oil to it and I said well son are you been losing any oil and he said no dad I don't I don't know I don't think I've been leaking any oil. I said why would you add two more quarts of oil to a car that ain't leaking a bit of oil I said now we got oil up in the heads and, and, and he looks at me, and I want to tell you, the only reason I'm telling you that right now, we ended up getting it fixed. It took us about a three-hour tour. We went home and got the van, and, and we started running. But I'm going to tell you, the reason why I'm telling you that today is because I think so many times we add things into our life. And sometimes God says, that's not leaking. Leave that part alone. Amen? Amen. Leave that part alone. Leave that part of your life alone, and, and, and just keep what is already working. Just leave it alone. Leave it alone. And there's been a couple times over, over the past, you know, just few weeks where it just seems like if, if I would have left things alone, maybe in that area, things would have been okay. I moved a couple kids on my bus this past week, and, 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 and they reminded me pretty quick that if I would have left it alone, it would have been a lot easier if I could just left them kids in the back because I brought them to the front. And some kids will be right up front with you when they bring, you know, you bring them to the front. They'll say, I'm going to let you know something that this, this is not going to work out. And I say, I'm going to call your mama. And then usually the kids would say, well, uh, go ahead and call my mama. And I'm thinking, I, I've seen how that works out before. So I know you don't want me to call your mama. No, don't call my mama. Don't call my mama. Really, don't call my mama. Because usually whenever I tell them I got their numbers, and, and, I, and I look it up for them, and I'll show them the number. i say, here's your mama's number. You want me to give your mama's number at work? And then, then they start to get a little more serious. Why? Because a lot of times we respect our mom's. A whole lot more than we respect anybody else. Amen? Because a lot of times we understand that as, that, that as mama, my mama always laid down the law, folks. My mama always ran the show around the house. My dad, you could almost take my dad to the full extent of the limits. You know, I remember one day pushing a grocery cart down the alleyway at Kroger's down in Covington. And, and, and my dad was picking out stuff. And I can't remember ever really going and, and going to the grocery store because my dad never shopped. But this is one special day where he had to get like five things, and I'm behind him, and I was going to be his great volunteer that day, and I'm pushing the cart, and I'm getting a little bit closer to his heels, and he knows I'm getting closer, and he says, son, you better not do that. But I knew my dad. So eventually, after about the third aisle, I went ahead and just itched him in the heel a little bit, and about knocked him down, and I thought he was going to knock me out, but he never touched me. Now, I'm going to tell you something. With my mom, my mom, when she went to Kroger's, my mom was all business. My mom had a book of coupons. You didn't mess with my mom. You just got out of the way of mom, and mom was slinging stuff and this and that. And if you ever did mess with mom or even thought about messing with mom, my mom would just jack you in the side of the head. Right in front of everybody. There'd have been no waiting. Mom, can I have some? No, you can't have a bam. I'd be like, hey, hey, hey. They didn't even call it abuse back then. They just called it discipline. Amen? Amen. That's what they called it back then. That they called it discipline. Now, man, you got these kids nowadays, and they're just, I'll call the police. Well, go ahead and call the police. <laughs> you know, if they get here, they'll hit you before I'll hit you. My mom used to tell me, I don't think I ever threatened to call the police, but I'm sure if I had threatened that, I'd have got, I'd have got beat so severely before the police could have ever got there. I promise you, that would have been a bad decision on my part. But I was reading something this week, and I want to read it to you, uh, about mothers. And it says, G. Campbell Morgan, a profound British preacher whose four sons all became pastors, influenced millions with his preaching, teaching, and writing. One day when his young son, Howard, finished preaching, a, a reporter asked him, Since you have five pastors in 